Hello, my name is Thane and I like to experiment with all kinds of AI technologies. Midjourney V6 is quite different from earlier models so join me in discovering what is different and how you should go about prompting now. So let's just start from the beginning, how can you use it? You should check out your settings with slash settings to see which model is the active one. Or, you can just add dash dash V6 or dash dash V6.0 in the end part of your prompt. It really depends on if you want it as the default for all of your prompts or do you want to specify it each time, but otherwise, use the current default version for Midjourney. Now let's see which arguments can be used with V6. First up is dash dash AR, which stands for aspect ratio. It means that you control the shape of your image and say, if you want it wider or taller. The default is, as usual, the ratio 1 to 1. That produces an image which is 1024 by 1024 pixels. If you make your image taller or wider, the image will be elongated in one direction, but it will go smaller in the other direction. For example, a 16 by 9 image will be 1456 by 816 pixels. You cannot make your image bigger with changing the aspect ratio. Meaning, if you prompt for 4096 by 4096, you will not get it as the equivalent pixels as a result. That is what upscaling is for and we will look at the options for that later on in this video. Aspect ratios have been problematic during the launches of previous versions, so it's really good that we have this one included right from the start without any limitations. You have prompted your image in V6, now what? There is a menu under your generated image in Discord with 9 buttons. If you have been using Midjourney for a while, you will recognize these buttons. But if you have no idea what these are, let's briefly go over them. The U1, U2, U3, and U4 buttons are for upscaling an image from the grid that you just got. The numbers go like this, from 1 to 4. Actually, there is no upscaling happening if you press any of these images, they will remain the same size. You will just get that image separately and some additional buttons, which we will look at in just a moment. The button that looks like a refresh is for re-rolling the same prompt, meaning that it will take the exact same prompt and do it again. I think it just takes the same prompt and changes the seed. Except when you have the seed explicitly set in your prompt, then it will give you exactly the same images again, but it just wastes your generation hours by doing the same thing all over again. So be mindful of that. And the remaining four buttons are the V1, V2, V3 and V4. These are for when you like an image out of your grid, but would like to see some variations of it. You will get images out that look very much like the original image. Both the reroll and variation buttons also allow the use of the remix feature that allows you to completely change your prompt as well if you have set it as enabled in your settings. So if you have it off, Midjourney will go do its own thing right away, and if you have it on, you will get a pop-up with the prompt text where you are able to edit any part of your prompt, or even the entire prompt if you wish to do so. So now you have an upscaled image. This is where you will currently see some differences to version 5.2, simply because V6 does not yet have all the features that version 5.2 did. But Midjourney has promised to add the missing features gradually at some point. Right now you will see six buttons under your upscaled image, so let's look at that. You basically have two options to upscale, and with both options, you will get a 2048 by 2048 pixels image out of it. So 2x upscale. There is no 4x upscale yet for V6. The only difference is that the subtle option tries to keep it more like the original while the creative option may change some details in your image. Then you have the very subtle and very strong buttons, which do basically the same thing as the V1 to 4 buttons under the grid image except you have the option to get more variation out of it with the strong button. And then you have the heart button that basically sets the rating of this image on Midjourney's website to the highest option. 
It is for organizing and finding your favorite images better later on. The web button takes you to that particular image on Midjourney's website. It is one way of downloading or looking at your images. For some reason, I still prefer to click on an image and then click the open in browser because I can then open the full size image which I don't think is as easily accessible via the website. The biggest it will go on the website at the moment is the size of your browser window and not the actual size of the image. Okay, so those were the main features that are available in V6. Currently we do not have pan, zoom or vary region options which at least to me seem really important. I have noticed that it is sometimes harder now to control what you want out of an image. For example, Midjourney no longer wants to listen to some of the photography language that used to be helpful when trying to establish if you wanted a close-up or a full shot of a person. I'm still trying to learn and figure out how to do that in V6, so I will surely let you know when I have these tips to share with you. But one thing to try out at least for now, if you don't want close-ups, is to use negative prompting. And I mean specifying dash dash, no close-up for example. I had some initial success when I added that to my prompt. It zoomed out a little bit in the image, so I got the images to show a little bit of the upper body. But it was a struggle to get as far as the legs. Playing with the aspect ratio helped a little bit as well. The taller aspect ratios allowed for more room to create a body in as the people in the images tend to be sitting now. I was finally able to generate a few images where the entire person was showing by specifying that the woman was standing somewhere and then also added the dash dash, no close up. And it only worked on a taller aspect ratio. So this is one area where the pan and zoom features are currently sorely missed. But I then went back and tried another thing, which was specifying the kind of shoes the person was wearing. And that finally made the images depict the entire person along with the shoes. Strangely all of the tests I did with similar prompts were in the photography style, but somehow adding in the detail about shoes made most of the grid in painted style. Adding dash dash no close up took it back to photography, so I am not sure if it was just an anomaly with the seed it ended up with, or something else in this combination. In my next video I will be looking at some of the more advanced features for V6, and what they do. But I do hope you learned something new about Midjourney and V6 from this video. There is so much to discover and figure out, so if you have any tips to share about your findings, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I thank you so much for watching and let's continue prompting.